How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. The other day I put out this video called uh, Life in an Off-Grid Cabin and in just a couple weeks time it's went from zero views to being my highest viewed video of all time. I've been doing YouTube for about three years and off-grid rustic cabin life videos but this one has really really struck a nerve and the comments have been astronomical. I've answered hundreds and hundreds of comments on that video. But what I've learned is that that topic of living off-grid, it resonates so much with so many people. And it also it also has got me a lot of comments where, where people have been angry with what I've done. People have called me out for doing something they wouldn't do. So in this video, I'm going to go over the whole idea of off-grid living and try to really boil it down I'm going to go over some of the reactions I've got from that video, some of the things I've learned over the years with off-grid living, why anybody would want to do it. Can you know, can you really be off-grid totally? I think there is a truth about what it's like to live off-grid. Let's get into it. So why would anybody want to live off-grid? I had so many comments that were in the vein that this is so relaxing, this is so peaceful. This is such a wholesome, this is the right way to live. This is such a satisfying video to watch. I really think that cabin in the woods is almost more symbolic. It's like, as soon as we see that, it gives us feelings of simplicity and peace and tranquility and, and satisfaction with what you do for work. Working with your hands, making stuff. I think all of us are longing for something that we've lost in the last 40, 50, 60 years there's a simplicity that we don't have anymore. So when we see someone living in a cabin, it resonates. I know it resonated with me 20 years ago when, when Brooke and I built our first cabin. The idea of living in a small little log cabin that you built yourself and heat with firewood and just have a few things and li just live simply. A lot of us are just, are, we're missing that peace and tranquility and satisfaction that people might have had when life was harder and simpler and the cabin in the woods was more the norm than the exception. I think the satisfaction of working with your hands is something that people crave and might not get enough of. Uh, the peace and quiet of living in an off-grid cabin. I think everyone has a, an, a vision of that in their mind. And that brings me to another thing. I had a lot of negative comments on this video. I had a lot of people telling me I'm, I'm doing it wrong, whatever it was. For instance, when I made breakfast, I made breakfast on a propane stove. On that property, Brooke and I lived in a wall tent for two summers while we built the place up and cleared land and, and put, put the cabins together and stuff. So to have a propane stove, it's a real luxury. It takes two tanks of propane for about every six months and uh, you just fire it up and you cook. I got a lot of comments. Why aren't you cooking your breakfast on the wood stove? Like it's the wrong way to go. I even had a comment that said, well, you can't be off grid because your stove lit without a match. Well, that's a pilot light. Uh, that's how that, it's an old, old stove. It's got a pilot light. But that comment was reoccurring. People in their vision of living off grid, they see somebody cooking on the wood cooktop of the wood stove. The propane didn't fit their vision. You know, a lot of times in Fairbanks, Alaska in the summer, it can get up to 80 degrees. If I want to make a grilled cheese sandwich, what am I supposed to do? Get a fire going in the wood stove so the wood stove top is warm enough to make a grilled cheese? The propane is a luxury and uh, you don't really want to run a Coleman stove inside and you get sick of going outdoors to, to heat up a can of soup. Which brings me to another point. In a lot of people's vision of off-grid living, uh, the first thing that jumps into their mind is being remote. I never once said in my video that I was remote, but I get this reoccurring comment. Oh, you've got Wi-Fi in your YouTube channel. You're not that remote. I see you got store-bought eggs. You're not remote. I never said I was remote. I'm 20 some miles from downtown Fairbanks in this video. I had a lot of comments about uh, wolves howling in the background while I'm picking cranberries. And uh, people, I think people just want to, to think that that that's wolves. It's actually my neighbor's sled dogs. Uh, we don't live on that mountain by ourselves. And just down the mountain from us, the neighbor's got, I don't know, half a dozen sled dogs. And three or four or five times a day, they'll all let out howling. I love it. 
but uh, not wolves. Another comment I got quite a bit was, that really looks like a lonely life. I, I understand that my wife, Brooke, and our two kids were not in that video. They were in Michigan when I shot that video. Now, why were they in Michigan? Because Brooke and I, we own a home in Michigan we bought in 2012. And we owned that property with a cabin in Alaska. And uh, a lot of people have had a problem with that. But, you know, I'm not, if we don't live in that cabin year round, it's like selling out the dream. You're not off grid, you know, you, you guys are in two different places. The, the fact is, I work concrete work and film work. And of course, you, you might have seen Brooke and I, we've done some stuff on TV. But mostly what we're doing is YouTube, and we, we both work in, in the Fairbanks North Star Borough all summer long. We used to live there year-round for six or seven years. And uh, then we, we moved to uh, farther east in Alaska, and we lived there for six years. When people see that uh, I'm packing the cabin up, I've had a lot of negative reaction. You know, you're, you're a phony because you're not spending your winters there. It's because what my life is actually like, it doesn't fit someone else's preconceived vision of what it's like to live off grid. I need to be there in the dead of winter, even though there's no construction work in Fairbanks and that's what I do, but I need to be there in the dead of winter in order to be doing it right, in order to fit someone else's preconceived idea of what it's like to live off grid. It's amazing the negativity that's come from people's ideas. The bacon and the eggs thing was amazing, you know. You know, you didn't raise that bacon. You're not off grid. Those eggs are from a store. Yeah, the store's 15 miles away. Of course the eggs and bacon. I didn't raise pigs and chickens. I am not a farmer and I live on I live on a mountainside that's so steep the pigs and chickens would roll off <laughs> down into the valley. But someone's mind says, if you're off grid, you have to raise livestock. You have to get all your own food yourself. That brings me to another point. I grew up right about here in lower Michigan, right about the middle of lower Michigan. And when I was a kid, the Amish came in. I remember seeing buggies and horses when I was seven or eight, five years old, something. And it was amazing. We'd stop and it would be interesting to see. About the time I was 10 or so, the Amish moved in and they literally bought eight out of every 10 old farms and all the Amish are still there. So that whole area I grew up in, all through high school and junior high and even elementary, I was in the smack dab in the middle of Amish country. I grew up around the Amish. A lot of people, when they think about off-grid living, the first thing they think about is Amish. And yes, the Amish are off-grid to a large extent. They don't have power, a lot of them will have a pump well but they you know they have outhouses uh, they they grow all their own food most of their own food you can see an Amish in Walmart or, or Myers if you go to town all the time nothing out of the ordinary because what the Amish have done the Amish have chose the way they want to live based on if a technology is going to benefit them or if it's going to mess up their community be distracting and, and be a negative loss a lot of things the Amish do don't make any sense to me, but, you know, I'm not Amish. That's their thing. For instance, half of every Amish family down where I grew up, they have, uh, they'll have a sawmill, but Amish don't run chainsaws, so they can't, they're not cutting anything to length unless it's part of the, the mill that they have. I've never seen an Amish run a cross-cut saw or have a good axe, so they're definitely not into the timber end of things, but they will run a sawmill. Now this kind of goes against what a lot of people think is off-grid because they, some people have the idea that you have to make everything, that you have to be self-sufficient. I'm going to cover the whole self-sufficient thing in a different video. But the Amish will can all their food. Amish don't make canning jars. That's, that's a factory somewhere that, you know, it's been making canning jars for 120 years. And it's a technology that's probably out of the reach of almost all of us, unless you're in the glass manufacturing industry. They don't make that. They, they cook on cast iron skillets that, that is beyond their technology to make. They have chose things from the modern world, from society, that fit, that are positives. And they've rejected other stuff that is a negative. So when people talk about the Amish living off-grid, you have to understand the Amish use hundreds and hundreds of items that they cannot produce 
don't have the technology to produce, but it fits their lifestyle. One of the other negative comments I've got several times from this video is uh, you've got Wi-Fi, you got a YouTube channel, you can't be off-grid. Well, I have to drive to the Fairbanks library to upload my videos. This camera that I'm shooting on, I've got two batteries I use for the camera, and they're big batteries, and I recharge them in my car. If I need any real power to like run a table saw or a skill saw or something like that, I'll fire up my Honda generator. Just because you're off-grid does not mean that you can't have power. It means that, it basically, it means in its simplest form, you're not on the power grid. The power company's never going to shut off your power. You make your own power. You don't have to make your own power. You could be completely off-grid, completely rustic, but uh, that's your choice. If you want to give up radio, if you want to give up electric lights, if you want to give up whatever that you can plug in, electric power tools, you know, that's your business. Like the Amish have chose to not use that stuff. You can choose what you want in an off-grid lifestyle. The reason we don't have power in Alaska is it's a small cabin we're in. We can make enough power for our own needs. There is actually a power line that runs up the mountain we're on. I could get power. It would cost an incredible amount of money, and it's not worth it. Because I've lived without power on and off for the last 20 years. It's a choice, and that choice can look however you want it to look. In our case, we have two generators. One of them we didn't even run all this summer. The other one is one of those Honda suitcase generators. If you want to charge up batteries or if you want to run power tools or something, grab the generator, fire it up, and it's right there. And the rest of the time, it's just out of sight. I've maybe run six gallons of gas through it all summer. So technically, you know, we have power if we need it. There's no reason to be a zealot about being off grid. It's just all about choices. That brings me to another point. Why would anybody want to be off grid in the first place? Why does this resonate with people so much? Couple different things. I think number one, people long for the peace of a simpler life. Number two, I think simplicity in general. People want a simpler lifestyle just because of how fast-paced the modern world is. When they see somebody that's living off-grid, it just speaks to them. It spoke to me, it speaks to you, it's anybody that's into, into the outdoors, maybe that's another thing. The setting that you're in. Maybe you live in the city and you see a, the cabin in the woods, it's like, it's everything you want. It, it speaks to you so much. And being off-grid is just part of that. Like I said earlier, I think the other part is the satisfaction. It's satisfying to build a little cabin to live in. It's satisfying to work with your hands, to make your own stuff, to cook your own food, whatever. You know, it's, it's to cut your own firewood. I think a lot of people are longing for satisfaction in the work that they do. I think probably too many people in this country are doing a job for the paycheck that doesn't necessarily satisfy them. They, they feel like they're doing the wrong thing. They're, they're spending their time, which is finite, in doing something that's not the best fit. I guess in, in one way you can think about it, you're wasting your life. That could be the way some people look at it. Like, I'm, I'm in a job I, I'm not satisfied with. I feel like I should be doing something else. I think that thought, that feeling, is pretty much the norm in modern life. And then when someone sees an off-grid video, an off-grid cabin, the cabin in the woods, it just speaks to them in, in so many ways. I want to do work that's satisfying. I want to go to sleep feeling like I've accomplished something. I want, as opposed to working 400 hours to pay for propane and electric and fuel oil and whatever, why can't I work 40 hours to cut wood and to buy a generator. I think the satisfaction of satisfying work is, is one of the real, real reasons why someone would want to move off grid. It's part of that mindset. It's part of that vision people have. Of course, everybody wants to be happy and doing something that's satisfying or more satisfying than what you're doing now, it speaks to everybody. Everybody gets that. So that's another reason why a lot of folks really want to explore the off-grid lifestyle. If you don't like the setting where you live, if you live in town, or if you live in the country but you've got neighbors next to you, the one thing 
about off-grid living that is so beneficial in that respect if you wanted to live someplace that's more inspiring more more foresty area that looks more like a campground and less like a subdivision when you go to look for property remote property is property that's not going to have power and it's always going to be cheaper like in fairbanks for example in fairbanks you know you can buy a good building lot on a paved road with power and it's going to cost you the same amount that 40 acres out of town is going to cost you with no power on a two track and of course in a forested setting you can take care of your own heat uh, if you buy a little sawmill you can mill your own lumber you can build your own buildings there's so much freedom that goes with that but you have to give up something you're probably going to be a little farther from town you don't have to give up power but you have to commit to make your own power that's a generator and solar panels that sort of thing. Which brings me to another point. People complained about me eating store-bought eggs. And then in the same sentence, they'll tell me to get solar panels. I can't make a solar panel. When it comes to self-reliance, there is nothing about solar panels that's self-reliant. Because I can't make a solar panel. If it broke, I couldn't repair a solar panel. It's, <laughs> it's that close to wizardry. The solar panels are a very complicated thing. But I like solar panels in the fact that you can get power from them. They're simple, they don't make any noise, they just charge your battery. They're a wonderful thing. Just like the Amish, when you're choosing technology that fits, solar panels work. Uh, generators work. Speaking of solar panels too, Brooke and I have one big solar panel and we have one small battery. On a nice sunny day, it'll charge up that battery and we can charge all our cell phones, we can charge all our laptops and stuff. And, uh, and that technology fits. Another comment that I got that was funny was someone says, uh, someone said, metal fork, Teflon pan, you're not that remote. And again with the remote thing, I didn't say it was remote. It was a video about living off grid. The remote is an idea that somebody brought to that video that was their vision, not mine. Uh, another one was uh, the cast iron skillet. Somebody said, uh, you need to get yourself some cast iron skillets because they saw me cooking on a, on a Teflon griddle. First of all, Nothing wrong with cast iron. The guy's right. Cast iron, uh, way better than Teflon. I totally agree. Cast iron, uh, it's going to last way longer than I'm going to last. So there's another good point. But I think the spirit of that comment was more along the lines of, you need a cast iron pan because that's what I see being appropriate in that setting. That's part of my vision of being off grid is cast iron so i mean that's a kind of six in one and half a dozen in the other so what's the bottom line what is the truth what is the truth about off-grid living the truth about off-grid living is it's just a choice and it's a choice that doesn't fit everybody's lifestyle it doesn't work for everybody if you live in a city and you have a small house and you heat with propane uh it's probably opening a can of worms to put in a wood stove it's probably against the law to put in a wood boiler, which, you know, it's probably not the right thing for you to do. You'd have to buy your wood. It would smoke up the neighborhood, get the neighbors mad at you. And even a wood stove, you know, if you live on a lot in town, you're going to have to buy your wood. You know, you're gonna, we're going to run out of trees pretty soon. So it might not fit. But if you want to change your scenery, if you want to get more rural, the option of going off grid opens up the world to you. You don't drive around and look at properties and be like, oh, that's a beautiful piece. I could see living there. I could see building a cabin, but there's no power. Changing your mindset to making your own power, using propane for your refrigerator. I mean, that's then you don't even have to run power all the time. Not going with an electric range, going with a propane range. Uh, then you, you only just need a couple batteries and uh, some propane tanks and you can pretty much do whatever you did when you had power so when you change your mindset to off-grid living it, it literally opens up where you live you can live wherever you can afford to and by afford to i mean what are the bills that you have to pay for how far do you have to go for a job that's another comment i got all the time what does this guy do for a living people are like how can somebody just live in a cabin like that that's bs well yeah it is it would be bs because you just can't be at your cabin just just living it up on the off-grid lifestyle there's a lot more to it uh, i work construction I'm, I'm a cement finisher by trade before tv and youtube so all summer long uh, i'm out with my friend dave and we're, we're pouring concrete 
and I drive the roads back to my place because I'm not off the road system. A lot of people assume that's what off-grid means. I've never met an Amish person who's off the road system. Not one. Never. A lot of people who live in remote cabins, they're still on the road system. You take the road to the two-track to the goat trail, you're still on the road system. People saw cars in my driveway in my video when I take my water bucket up to uh, get water for washing dishes out of my rain barrel. Not too remote. See, so you got cars in your parking lot. But yeah, I've got four or five of them. They're all paid for. They're all older models. I can work on every one of them. These are all things that play into self-reliance. I own vehicles that I can buy with cash, that I can insure with minimal insurance, that I can fix with my own hands. But the idea that I'm not doing something right because I'm on the road system, I'm not trying to portray myself as anything that I'm not. I'm not trying to slip one past you and make people think that, you know, I'm Grizzly Adams out, out on the mountainside. That's not the truth of the matter. The truth is always much more interesting, much more informative, and has a lot more value than trying to put forth some kind of uh, fabricated persona. No, I, I live off-grid. I could get power if I wanted. I, I'm 20 miles outside of probably the most remote city in the United States, the farthest north place in the country that's actually quote-unquote a city. I mean, so yeah, I am quite remote, but I am on the road system. I could get power. I chose not to. I live in a, in a quiet little cabin I built with my hands. I live on property where I've got my own trees I can cut for firewood. Um, you know, I, I've got most of the boxes checked. Maybe I didn't get all the boxes checked for some people. But that's the truth. That's, that's the truth about off-grid living. It gives you the flexibility to live pretty much anywhere that you want, so long as you can get out to your occupation or you can do your occupation at that location it really frees you up. It's a refreshing way to get back some of the things that we long for that we don't have in modern life. If you look at the other side of things, it's uh, get out of college with a ton of student loans, buy a couple vehicles on credit that you have to insure with full coverage insurance, I have a mortgage on a home, that might strap you to the point where it takes the joy out of your life to where living in that cabin in the woods becomes the most wonderful thing you can think of. But the idea that it has to be something specific, that's not really the case. It's really about picking the technology that fits your lifestyle, paring down, simplifying, and finding the satisfaction and peace that we're all missing in life. That's really what off-grid living is all about. So if you're looking for satisfaction and peace and privacy and tranquility and a simplification of your life, lowering your bills, giving yourself more peace of mind, off-grid living is probably a great fit for you. You don't have to give up your laptop. You don't have to give up your cell phone. You just need a way to charge your laptop and charge your cell phone. So right now I'm talking to you guys on a $500 camera. I'm gonna load that footage onto my MacBook Pro, which I bought used at a pawn shop. I'm gonna take it to the library. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube and you guys are gonna be able to see this video. It's the choices that you make. It's the way you tailor your lifestyle. Just like the Amish have chosen things that fit their idea of a good life and they've rejected things that they're afraid would ruin their quality of life it's really all about quality. If privacy is important to you, if simplicity is important to you, if the satisfaction of working with your hands, if you want to live in, in a rustic setting, maybe you, want, maybe you want a setting that's more inspiring, more forest, more wilderness, and that necessarily means you're going to be off the power grid. Maybe you want to be just more remote, more out of the way, and, and just have more peace and quiet than in that regard. An off-grid lifestyle might be a perfect fit for you. It is what you make it. It can give you a lot of the things you want. It's not for everybody and there is no exact way that it needs to be done. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name's Dave Whipple. You've been watching Bush Radical. Be radical, eh? See you soon.